Hey everybody! In this video, we're going to be showing you a fantastic method of painting a Thousand Suns Legionary for the Horus Heresy by Games Workshop. Now, the Thousand Suns have a really tragic backstory and also a really beautiful colour scheme with that nice metallic shiny red. And in this video, we're going to be showing you a great way of doing that that looks fantastic on the tabletop. So, we hope you enjoy it, and we'll see you at the desk. Thousand Sons of the Horus Heresy have a really nice iconic colour scheme with a sort of metallic candy red and in this video we're going to be showing you a great way of doing that and to do it what you need to do first of all is paint all the power armour gold. Now this means using Retributor Armour Spray as the undercoat is ideal for it but you could go for a grey undercoat if you prefer, the choice really is yours. Either way the first step is going to be the same where what we have to do is paint it with a regular gold metallic paint. Now if you've gone for a gold undercoat this might seem a little bit redundant but having that undercoat means that this is just going to be quicker than using a grey undercoat which is why I've gone this way, but it does two important things. Firstly, it allows us to make sure that the whole model is gold, which is important for that candy red that we're going to be doing over the top. And secondly, what it's going to do is provide a better surface for the next paint we're going to use to adhere to, which is going to be one of Citadel's contrast paints. If you ever used one of these metallic sprays before, you'll know that washes and contrast paints tend to slip off them, so it's important just to get around that and make the next step easier. So what we need to do is pick out a good gold for it, and what I've got here is some Dragon's Gold, very similar to Retributor Armour, so ideal for this sort of thing. What we want to do is just paint it all over the miniature. So get a rough brush, I have a medium base brush here from Citadel, quite an old one as well, perfect for this sort of thing though. What we need to do is just as ever make sure that paint's thinned down with a little touch of water, and then it's just a matter of painting it all over. Not worrying about any particular details at this stage, just making sure that we get that nice strong gold in all the nooks and crannies and all across those flat surfaces. Once you've got that gold nice and even across the whole miniature, it's then time to move on to the next step, which is the really fun one, because now we're going to put that metallic red on there. And for this, what we need is a contrast paint from Citadel. The one to use is Blood Angels Red, so a nice punchy red, this one. And the idea is to now neatly paint this over the panels one at a time. So efficiency and neatness is the key here. So for that reason, what I recommend you go for is a medium-sized brush and one that holds a good point. So for that reason, I've got a size one here from Art Sopus. If you want to go for Citadel, you're looking at a medium layer brush, something like that. But with it, what we need to do is just get some of this onto our palette, so onto the regular palette just here, and then I like to add just a touch of water to it because it's quite a strong colour. I like to just take the edge off it a little bit there like that. Then the thing is to do is make sure your brush isn't overloaded, so a moderate amount is what you need on there. And then what you need to do is pick one panel at a time and colour it in completely. So for example, if we go for this leg piece just here, we need a good starting point. So we look for panel lines where we can use that as the entryway, so on the side here. And what you do is just start applying it, then just moving it evenly across the whole surface. Now as I say, you need to be fairly efficient as you do this to keep it smooth, but just apply it, and then once you've got that on there, just move away from it and let it settle as it will. Because if you go back to it too soon whilst it's still drying, what you'll do is rip the surface and get a really unpleasant finish, and then you'll need to redo the panel gold and come back to doing it later on. So you see, you just got to work your way around like this, just colouring it in, making it nice and neat. Now because of the neatness that's required, this is a little bit of a lengthy process, but it's also really satisfying because you can see how bold it is and how quickly the colour takes to it. So it's actually really fun. So just take your time and enjoy yourself working your way around. And also whilst you're doing it, just keep an eye out for any parts that you want to leave gold and do your best to avoid those. If you do catch them, just neaten them up once again before you continue, but otherwise it's just a matter of basically just having fun as you colour it in. And with that, this legionary now has that bright candy red on the armour. And so now what we can do is start picking out some of the details and painting the various features on him. And for this, what we're going to do first of all is turn our attention to the parts that have remained gold. So things like the trim, for example. For this, what we need to do is apply a wash over it to get the definition. And here what we want is a nice chestnut wash to get a really sort of rich gold, very opulent looking gold to really suit their character. So I'm going to use some flesh wash for this. And to apply it, I've gone for a slightly smaller brush now. I've gone down to a size zero just for a little bit more control. Because with this, we just need to focus it on particular areas. So as I say, anything that's going to remain gold. So for example, on the shoulder pad where we've got the Legion badge, the trim is something I want to keep gold. So I'm just making sure I don't have loads of paint on the brush so it doesn't run out of control because here we need to paint it directly over the top of it and let it, just let it settle into that recess where it touches the red. So we get that nice bit of definition between those two colours. Thank you. 
That gold's been washed, and so now what we're going to do is start moving on to another selection of base coats, which can all share another wash. In this case, it's going to be a black wash. And the first thing we need to do is start the white details that appear on this legion, which are really nice, really different, definitely make them stand out from Blood Angels here. For it, what I'm going to use is some Ivory Tusk, which is an off-white, because this way we've got room to highlight with a pure white later on, and this way we'll get more definition on these details. And to apply it, I've gone down to a size double zero brush, because here what I want to do is pick out that legion badge. Now, as ever, we're going to make sure the paint's nicely thinned down on the palette so it's good and smooth and then you're ready for these parts and like with many things on Horus Heresy it's really up to you exactly which parts you do here. I think the Legion badge looks particularly nice in white though you could of course do it in gold if you want to but also a thing that looks really nice to do in white is the bolt gun casing which is really unusual compared to all the other legions. Once you're happy with those white details, there are two more colours that we need to apply to the miniature before we do that black wash. And this is going to be the silver and the black. So for the silver, I'm going to use Surcoat Silver. Then for the black, I'm going to go for some Death Reaper, which is an off black, which we can then shade down for more depth with that black wash. But first of all, we need some Surcoat Silver. And to apply it, I've gone for the size zero brush this time. And here it's a case of looking for all the mechanical details that you want to be this colour. So things like vents, that sort of thing. A lot of it is going to be on the backpack. So we're looking at little things such as these little nozzles that are down here. I'm going to block these in entirely, and of course there are going to be lots of silver details on the bolter as well, such as the muzzle of the gun. And once you're happy with that silver, you're then ready to move on to base coat and the black details. And for this, I'm using some Death Reaper. And be aware that throughout this stage, the details do tend to be quite small because we're looking at joints and pipes, things like that. So definitely switch to a smaller brush. In this case, I'm using a size double zero and just really taking my time to make sure I just stay on these parts. And there we are, all that black's been painted in, and you can see it's lots of joints and little details like that. So with that done, what we can now do is apply that black wash over these new colors that we've just added. So this is going to be over that white, the silver, and the black, and here we need a black wash. So I'm gonna use some Oblivion black wash for this, and to apply it, I'm actually gonna to stick to my size double zero brush just to keep it under control, because we need to keep this off the flat parts of the red, so having a smaller brush to make sure we don't overdo it and overload it with too much wash is really gonna help out with that. So as I say, what we need to do is paint this directly over all the black, white, and the silver. So for the joints, you can see how it's a good idea to have a small brush for things like this, because this way you can just very carefully work it into these recesses so it just fills that area and gives you that shading. And the same is true on the areas such as the white and the silver, and on the white, it is gonna leave a little bit of a murky finish to it because it's such a jump, but don't worry, we are gonna sort that out later on. Now, in addition, if you want to, at this stage, you can use the black wash just to get a little bit more definition on some of the red details. So for example, around the feet, if you want to, you can run it into some of these armor panel recesses, such as just here, just to get a little bit more definition in these areas. One thing to definitely do at this stage, though, is to run it a little bit into the eyes, and we'll come back to those later on. That wash is now completely dry, giving us that definition on those details. And now it's time to tackle that slight muddiness that we've got on the white detail, but also we're gonna do it on the gold as well. And so for this, what we're gonna do is now return to some ivory tusk with a layer. Then we're also gonna do a layer using some dragon's gold. But first of all, we need ivory tusk. And for this, I'm going for my size zero brush here. And the idea with this now is to reapply it onto the areas that are white, but this time instead of painting everything, so we'll avoid the recesses so as to retain that definition. So essentially what we're gonna be doing is cleaning up the flat areas. So what you need to do is just make sure your paint's thin on the palette and just twist away the excess paint to bring the bristles to a good point and then we'll have that control as we do this. Because if we take a look at the bolter, for example, what we're aiming to do is look for those flat areas just here and just apply it to those parts whilst just carefully avoiding those recesses that are darker. So it's just a matter of just taking your time, being as neat as possible, just looking for those flat parts and just working your way around. The same is true when we come up to the Legion badge where again, we just wanna pick out the raised area, leaving it dark where it meets that red armor. Once that's done, we're then ready to return the shine to the gold by returning to some dragon's gold, and this is just going to be thinly layered onto the parts that we left to be gold earlier on. So for example, the shoulder pad trim, I've also got these nozzles on the backpack, and remember, keep an eye out for recesses and just make sure that you don't drop into those, just to retain that definition from the wash.
And with that, the layering stage is now complete. And if you want to, you could pretty much leave it here. You just need to paint the eyes in, which we're gonna do a little bit later on. But if you really want your miniature to stand out on the table, then highlighting is what you need to do. And that's what we're gonna start doing now, beginning with the metallics. So here, what we want to do is some edge highlighting for these hard surfaces to really make them pop. And for that metallic red and also the gold, what we can use is a bright gold for the highlight. So in this case, we're gonna use some glistening gold. And once that's done, we'll then move on to the silver. And here we need a bright silver. So for this, I'm gonna use some mithril blade. But first of all, I need that glistening gold. And to apply it, I'm going for the double zero brush because you definitely need a fine brush here with a good point on it. If you're going Citadel, then definitely go for something like a small layer brush for this stage. And with it, we're looking now for all the sharp edges on the armor, and we basically want to follow along each one. And this is for both that metallic red and also the gold as well. So the trick to doing it is to make sure that paints thin correctly. So it's nice and smooth, you see, it's quite runny here on the palette. And then just as importantly is to make sure your brush isn't overloaded so it doesn't run out of control and go all lumpy and blobby on the actual miniature. So let's get rid of the excess paint on some tissue, load up a small amount fresh, and then you're ready to go. And so, as I mentioned, we're looking for all these sharp edges. And on this sort of power armor, it's actually very easy to approach a lot of it with the side of the brush and just skim along. So along here, for example, so using the side of the brush, you see I'm just going at about 45 degrees from the flat of the armor plate. That way it's very easy to get that sharp highlight running across there. Now you won't always be able to do that because sometimes the relief isn't enough to actually use the brush in that way. So just around the back of the leg just here. In this case, you need to use the tip of the brush and all you gotta do is just angle so you're nice and comfortable. And I find it really helps to paint in this downward motion like this. So always turning the model as you need to, to make sure the line that you're going for is vertical to you. And this way it's quite easy just to follow it down. You can see easily down the brush to make sure it's nice and neat and see what you're doing. Same is going to be true when you get to these panel lines, and again, just turn the model as you need to so that you're comfortable. So now it's just a matter of doing this all across the miniature, and this will be the longest stage of painting the model, but it's really going to be worth it in the end because it's going to absolutely make it pop. Just take your time and be as neat as possible around all the red and the gold. With that stage done, you can see it does quite a big difference to the miniature, and so what we now need to do is move on to highlighting the next metallic, which is gonna be the silver. Here I'm using some mithril blade, and the application is exactly the same. Once again, an edge highlight on all the silver details. And with that done, the Thousand Sun is very nearly finished. We've just got two more colors that we need to highlight before we move on to painting those eye lenses. And so for this, first of all, we need to highlight the white. And now it's time to use the pure white to get that crisp, clean finish to it. In this case, I'm gonna use some white star. Now, once that's done, we then need to highlight the black details. And for this, we need a dark gray. So I'm gonna use some dungeon stone gray here. But first of all, we need that white. So it's white star. And to apply it, I'm still gonna use the same brush, that size double zero, because here it's once again gonna be some edge highlighting on these features, looking for the sharpest corners and picking them out. So what we're mainly looking at here is going to be the bolter, and so we want to follow that casing all the way around. Where possible, using the side of the brush to get that nice smooth line on the edges, such as along here. Remember, just turn the model as you need to, to make sure you're nice and comfortable. But there are times where you'll have to use the tip of the brush instead, such as near the hand, to get areas such as this. Now there is also the Legion badge, and to highlight this is actually a sort of a peak across the whole middle of it. So to catch that, just use the side of your brush and just gently skim across the entire design. And once that's done, we can then move on to some dungeon stone gray, and this is going to be to highlight the black details. So for things like the joints, we're just looking for those raised up bits on the ridges here for that texture of this sort of undersuit that we've got. We just want to gently pick some of these out to help that texture stand out. And with that, we've now finished highlighting all the details in the miniature. So what we've got to do is to paint in the eye lenses. And for here, we're going to go for a glowing green effect. And to do it, the first thing to do is to make sure the lens area is quite dark, which is why we put that black wash in it earlier on. Then what you'll need is a pure white. So we're going to use white star again. And then we're going to go for the green contrast paint from Citadel. We're going to go for warp lightning, so a nice emerald green. But first of all, we need the white. So it's some white star. And using a really small brush once again, what we're aiming to do is just to paint a line in the middle of the eye. So you don't need loads of this. In fact, you want to make sure there's not that much on your brush so it doesn't go out of control. And then when you're ready, just really brace your hands so you're really, really steady. Carefully move in and just paint a line of this right in the middle of each eye lens. So we're looking at going in this region right here. With that done, it's then time to move on to some warp lightning, which are thinned down with just a little bit of water. And what we want to do is just carefully wash this into the recess of the eye lens. So just letting it run into this area here so it stains the whole thing. And this way that white shows through and gives us the impression of a glowing eye lens. Now, once this is done, the miniature is ready to be based. And as ever, it's entirely your choice what basing scheme you go for. But in this case, I'm gonna go for an urban rubble base.
And here we have our completed Thousand Suns Legionary ready to be forced to fight alongside the Arch Traitor Horus. So when it comes to painting the Thousand Suns, as you've seen, it's quite straightforward to get that really nice candy red that appears for that metallic red on their armour. But when you're doing it with the method we've shown here using contrast paint, just remember to do one panel at a time before you do the next one. This way you'll avoid doing too much at once and it drying part way through and then lines and splotches starting to appear on the colour. But anyway, have fun painting your Thousand Suns and we'll see you again very soon.